Hey there, this is TJR. This is Robert Kinsler. For Music Worth Buying, and we're here at the 2015 NAM Show. And Robert, since you're so much more verbal than me, why don't you go ahead and explain to the good folks out there what the NAM Show is? Well, the NAM Show is pretty much everything in terms of music. I mean, we are talking about music manufacturers, performers, innovators, um, you know, uh, virtuoso musicians. Uh, music education? Music education. It's everything. I mean, we're here on day one of the NAM show, and this attracts something like 100,000 people a day to Anaheim, to the convention center and surrounding area for music. And just this morning, to kick it all off, we saw Moby in a keynote address that was just amazing, where he totally inspired all this room full of young people and old-timers like me to be creative, to go out and just make the music and listen to the music that you, that you love. And also, he played classic rock songs on acoustic guitar and thrilled us with a jazz rendition of Billy Idol's uh, Rebel Yell. Yeah, which was very cool. It was, it was, yeah. it was fantastic. Nothing and hope, like when Moby meets Billy Idol, right? Nothing quite like it. And uh, hopefully we'll play you a few clips of that uh, on this uh, particular broadcast here. And so um, we're just going to be going inside, and we're going to be checking out the sights and sounds. There's live music everywhere. Uh, there's all kinds of uh, manufacturers showing off their gear, their software, DJ equipment. Uh, it's just, it's, it's kind of mind-boggling. So uh, hopefully you'll come with us and check out what we're checking out. We'll see. Ready? The last night, a little dancer came dancing to my door. Last night, a little angel came bumping on the floor. I got a license for love And if it expires Rain, hell from above Because in the midnight hour She cried more, more. <laughs> With a rebel yell She cried more Now this is Robert Kinsler. We're still here at day one at NAM, and I ran into the great Walter Trout, and I was surprised to see him because just last year he had a liver transplant, and and we featured you on our show. But tell me how you're doing. It's great to see you. Well, I'm surprised to see you too. As a matter of fact, I'm surprised to see anybody right now. <laughs> Pleasantly surprised. I'm doing great. I feel and great. I'm so looking forward to getting back to playing music, I'm writing songs, I'm going to make a new record. I have um, tours coming up starting in the summer. I'll be touring the U.S. I'll be touring uh, Europe. I'll be in the U.K. I'll, I'll be back doing what I love doing. Yeah, and your, and your album last year was so phenomenal, and many of us feared it was kind of like it could possibly be against, you know, it could be your last album, I mean, to be yeah. blunt. And here you are looking great, and, and you're back playing the guitar and ready to go out there. When I wrote that album and did it, I was very sick, and I felt this need to make a statement, like, maybe this is it, you know? And there's a lot of songs on that record I feel are kind of dark, lyrically, you know? And I think it's time now for me to make another record to say, I made it through. I'm on the other side. I feel great, and maybe I, there's, I know there's people out there that, you know, are ill and could benefit from, from getting on that transplant list. Um, it's worked incredible wonders for me, um, and so I'm, I'm a real advocate for um, signing up to be an organ donor. Yeah, yeah. If somebody hadn't have been a donor for me, I'd be dead by now. Well, thanks very much, Walter. And you, you look fantastic. I mean, it's, I can barely wait to see you perform again, and, I, and I'm really looking forward to hearing your next CD, too. Well, thank you, and thank you guys for all you do for guys like me. You know, I appreciate it. I really do. Well, you're very welcome. What? Just joking. Just joking.
We'll definitely make sure that readers know in March of 2015 they can pick up the book. And it is called Guitar Player, right? That is yeah. the name of the book, right? The subtitle is this, The Inside Story of the First Two Decades of the Most Successful Guitar Magazine Ever. Well, great. Subtle. Well, yeah, it's very subtle, yeah. It's not bragging if it's true. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I'm going to enjoy, you know, picking up a copy of this in March, too, and seeing how many of the covers I remember seeing, too, and the as old well. ads, some of the old ads and things. Uh -huh. Oh, it's great. And you see the artists, what they look like then, like uh -huh. a young Clapton, uh -huh. and then a, a still young Clapton, yeah. Yeah, I might say. Yeah. and Tell me a little bit about the guitar that you've brought with you today here. Well, the new 600 series guitars, I have a 614 model with me. This represents a practical step towards our continuing devotion to sustainably harvested woods. This is an instrument that uh, I wanted to build a more broadly appealing type of guitar using domestic maple and domestic spruce, as well as ebony harvested from our own sustainably sourced ebony mill in Cameroon. And so this guitar, it, uh, it follows with the same philosophy that drove the development of the 800 series, which was, first and foremost, a better guitar. I want a more expressive instrument, a more responsive instrument. And at the same time, I want to be a better steward of the resources. Looking forward into the future, another generation, even 10, 20 years, you know, we're, we're committed to a position of wanting to take better care of our forests and leave them in better condition than when we found them. So a, a guitar like this, that's an important part of that ultimate goal. Because this is material that's coming, like I said, it's from the domestic U.S. I know those forests. I've been there. They're in really good condition. They're well managed. They're well harvested. This is something that we could even potentially farm and do do uh, what you could describe as farmed table guitar making. You could you could deliberately grow guitar maple trees, and in a generation, in 40 years from now, be harvesting those to build new guitars. So well into the future, an instrument like this can exist. It's not a niche market, not a just a single flavor of guitar. It's a legitimate performance instrument that can be a primary instrument for a player that at the same time is a step towards our future. You know, the whole EDM thing, I mean, what would we know, what would we be surprised to know about that crowd? I mean, the festivals are selling 300,000 tickets to an EDM festival. They're all on drugs. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, sorry. That didn't go the way I thought it was going to go. You know, I, 
<laughs> you asked why you'd be surprised. That's not surprising. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Let me go ahead.